Hi everyone, Kevin C. back here with part four in our winemaking basics. This time we'll talk just about flavors and aging. Really I want to get to aging and we'll do it in the context of the source of flavors in wine. Remember in our basic winemaking process we talked about harvest in video number one, crush, press, and ferment in video number two, and we talked about the important issue of skin contact in red wines in uh, video number three. So today we'll talk just about finishing the winemaking process. And these again are just very basics in every step of this process. And, and, and with a lot of steps of the aging process, winemakers are making decisions that are gonna impact the flavor in the wine. However, if we wanna just summarize the five buckets or sources of flavor, I like to summarize them this way. So if you look down at the bottom, there are five different buckets and all these, these five combine to make up the flavor in our finished wine. So these are all the flavor molecules that end up in the wine. The first source of those are molecules that come from the grapes themselves and they, they, they are in the grapes and they go straight through to the wine with no change. So there's no processing. These would be molecules in grapes like Viognier and Riesling and Muscat, where the grapes taste a lot like the finished wine, especially the fruit and floral flavors you'd find in the grapes and you'd find them in the finished wine as well. Bucket number two starts with grape molecules, but it involves processing by yeast or malolactic bacteria. In other words, there are molecules in the grapes that have to be processed by yeast or malolactic bacteria in order to result in the finished flavor compound in wine. The example I'd like to give for this is Sauvignon Blanc. If you taste a Sauvignon, Sauvignon Blanc grape, it won't taste like passion fruit or grapefruit or box tree or even cat pea. What you'll find is that there's a molecule in Sauvignon Blanc or a series of molecules that are joined to another molecule. Yeast come along and they want to eat half of that molecule. They do so breaking the two parts and leaving behind the flavor compound. So in the case of Sauvignon Blanc, there'd be say a grapefruit molecule, grapefruit flavored molecule that's connected to something else like a sugar or an amino acid. And the grapes, the grape, the yeast this little single cell organism that does our fermentation, the yeast need to eat and they see that sugar or that amino acid and they say, hey, let me just take that, carve it off of the bigger molecule and eat it, leaving behind the grapefruit flavor that results in the wine. So that type of thing results in bucket number two. Bucket number three are, are, are flavors made by yeast in all fermentations. So yeast and malolactic bacteria, because they're living organisms just like us, they're going to eat different foods and they're going to produce different flavors. Well, we don't necessarily produce flavors, but they do. And uh, those are going to be made by yeast and it's, they're de those flavors are dependent on the yeast strain, but not necessarily dependent on the molecules that originate in the grapes. The fourth bucket is storage. So oak barrels are our primary source of flavor here. So we love to store wines in oak barrels for a couple of reasons. One is that the flavor of oak barrels, especially oak barrels, the inside of which has been nicely toasted, a little bit like uh, toasting a, a marshmallow to make it nice and brown. Those, those oak flavors complement most many wines, especially Chardonnay in the whites, and most red wines. The other reason we like to store in barrels is barrels allow a, a slight amount of oxygen into the wine. And in the case of red wines, this is especially important in the aging process. That oxygen can help the tannins in the wine come together, form bigger molecules that are softer, give us that fine tannin in our mouth. It gives us the drying sensation in a red wine. And if the tannins are really fine, we almost don't even know they're there and there. It's like a little silky in our mouth. The fifth bucket of flavor are the chemical reactions that occur in the bottle during aging. So this is why we put wine in a cellar and let it sit for a while, especially with red wines, some whites as well. Chemical reactions will happen in wine because it's a complex mixture and so 
molecules are combining and breaking apart, and this leads to wonderful complexity of flavor in some wines. So in an aged Cabernet, you'll have flavors of cedar and maybe um, cigar box, and those will develop over time. The fruit flavors that originated in the young wine may diminish a bit, but you'll get this wonderful complexity that'll give you, in an aged Cabernet, layers of cedar and, and, and cigar box and tobacco and candied cinnamon and chocolate and all kinds of wonderful things that, that, will, uh, that will come into your senses in waves that make aged wine so pleasurable. And those things happen during aging. That's the aging or the bottle bouquet, we often call it. Those things that develop in the bottle over time, those wonderful flavors that come from aging. If we drink a wine young, we don't necessarily get much benefit of bucket number five, but we may get some. So that's a little bit about the different sources and the aging decisions that a, a winemaker will make primarily have to do with the time in the barrel, bucket number four, and then also the time in the bottle before release. Okay, thanks for watching this series. A little plug for Santa Rosa Junior College. If you like this series, we go into much more detail on all these topics in the Introduction to Enology class, Wine 3. And we also touch on these topics in the Intro Wine 1 class, as well as the Wine 70 class, which is our introductory sensory analysis. We have an online version of Wine 3 that includes online lectures and labs on just four Saturdays, if you're in the area or would like to be in the area for four Saturdays. Again, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the winery or the vineyard.